So again, good afternoon, everyone. I will thank you for this presentation. And in between, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll be very happy to answer those questions. You can type your questions in the chat box and I'll come to know it and then I'll answer the question. So I guess everyone can look at this presentation, which is type one. So this uh, agenda is first we'll discuss what is credit rating, who does credit rating, types because various kind of ratings are done. When did it start? And there is one performance and credit rating of which is a scheme run by National Small Industries Corporation. So when did that start? What are the benefits of performance and credit rating which is PCR? How does it work? How does the report look like? What are the contents? Rating fee process and about SMERA. So credit rating is an assessment of the credit worthiness of the borrower uh, and it's an independent and unbiased opinion. Now these two words independent and unbiased are very important. Uh, I'll come to that why it is so. Second thing it is based on financial and non-financial parameters. So it is a mix of an art and science where certain set of parameters and variables have been identified over the past more than 100 years since this field of credit rating has evolved. It gains access, people, it, you know, people can gain access to loan and also get loan at a lower interest rate. So that is the purpose broadly. The PCR rating has one more purpose wherein uh, you can also get orders from various prospective buyers and there is an interesting scheme run by government of India which we will talk about. So credit rating can be assigned to any entity which wants to borrow money. Individual, corporation, state, provincial authority, sovereign, government and there are various ways in which these people can raise debt. So who does a credit rating? So in order to do a credit rating you have to be a credit rating agency which and you have to get a permission from SEBI and Reserve Bank of India. So currently these uh, six leading rating agencies of India uh, who do this credit rating, so Clears, Mera, Crystal, Brickworks, India Ratings and ICRA. These are the authorized rating agencies which can do credit rating of uh, entities. So, while credit rating can be done for a variety of products for a variety of reasons, we will restrict ourselves to three main categories in this discussion. The first one is a bank loan rating. That's the you know, most commonly used phrase for this kind of rating. Uh, second one is a performance and credit rating and this is a scheme run by the government of India. Third one is rating of bonds and other debt market instruments. So in case anyone has any questions, please do ask or prompt and I can look at the questions. So while I cannot hear you, I can always look at the questions and uh, we can also hear some class uh, questions. That's also a possibility. Right. So, a bank loan rating is for rate, uh, the rate of particular bank borrowing. So, one company can have you know, various loans from various banks. So, a company can have 1 crore term loan, 30 lakhs working capital limit from bank A, another second loan from bank B, uh, a bank guarantee from a bank. Right. So, these are various kind of loans. Bank loan rating is for one particular loan. It rates the particular facility. Performance and credit rating is a rating of the entity or obligor. That's the word which is normally used in the literature of finance. And it has two components, performance and credit. So, therefore, it is slightly different from a bank loan rating. A bond is an instrument wherein 
गवर्नमेंट्स लार्ज कॉर्पोरेट रेस मनी फ्रॉम डेट कैपिटल मार्केट सो दे डोंट गो टू अ बैंक टू बोरो दे पब्लिश अ पेपर व्हिच इज वेरी मच सिमिलर टू अ प्रॉमिसरी नोट और अ करेंसी नोट वेयर इन एनीवन हु होल्ड्स दैट पेपर इन अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट इन टाइम is entitled and eligible to get the return in form of interest which is normally called coupon in this case so it's interesting to know that how and when did credit rating start so towards the dawn of 20th century there was massive expansion of railroad in usa united states of america and there were other corporates which were emerging so they wanted to you know borrow money from public the public wanted to invest money in the bonds of these companies but one thing was lacking that one thing which was lacking is that there is a company which is situated on the east coast of america which is say some 2000 kilometers away from an individual who is in the west coast he has got say 10000 dollars to invest and he has got 10 different companies who approach publish their advertisement in newspaper and say they have invest in our bond and you get a 10% return how does the poor man decide where to invest money because whenever you invest and you lend there is a risk the risk is that you might not get your money back so there was a big question that how do you come to know when you don't know the borrower traditionally the borrowers and lenders have been known to each other so if you look at the industry of lending and banking people would approach a money lender and give some security in this case the the lender and the borrower are not known to each other they enter into a contract which is a bond but they don't know what is going to happen in future so uh, this john mr john moody star looked at this opportunity and started publishing credit rating it was published in a piece of paper like a newspaper so nowadays we have economic times and business standard where you look at the stock prices they published that so during those years they used to publish the the rating credit rating of a particular bond and they would uh, so the rating agency which later came to be known as rating agency uh, would do some analysis of the borrower and arrive at a conclusion that on a relative scale where uh, and if you say that denote by a letter so the convention is that you denote the highest graded as triple a and double a plus etc so you say though on relative scale if you have 10 different bonds in which you can invest these two are the best they are the safest their rating is triple the next two are good but not as good as the first two and their rating is double plus so that's the uh, the denotation which is used and immediately from 1909 to 1915 34 rating agencies emerged so standards and poors moody's etc emerged in that time so it is roughly a 100 year old industry slightly more than a 100 year old in form of rating and the model had been so for a very long time and if you look at what the major credit rating agencies so you have fitch standard and poors and moody's the same company was standard by mr moody and standard and poors was started in 1912 by two different individuals who later on joined hand so the surname for standard and poors that's how it uh, you know came to be known as standard and poors uh, now it's part of the macro group in india it was started by credit rating information services which is now known as crisil in the 1987 so in india it is uh, almost 40 years old this uh, industry so now i'll talk about the rating of bank loans which is a part of uh, regulations by international bank of international settlement which is required which is located in a place called basel which is in germany in switzerland not in germany in switzerland it is there 
is a slightly technical but not very difficult so it is an a bank loan rating is an no independent and unbiased opinion on the credit worthiness with your ability and willingness to repay in timely manner and in full so these letters which have been put in bold and underlined have a lot of significance in a typical transaction a borrower will always or is more likely to say that i am very credit worthy therefore you give me loan at a lower interest rate a uh, a lender on the other hand will question the credit worthiness and try to charge a higher interest rate so how does the opinion uh, of the the credit rating agency come in play so it has to be independent it should not be uh, and it has to be unbiased it should not favor the lender or the borrower it should not be dependent on the view of the lender or the borrower only it has to be based on a research which is done by the credit rating agency and their analysts so that is very important that is independent it is not biased either towards the borrowers or the lenders and it is your ability and willingness to repay so someone if has is a company which is making profit do they have the ability yes they are making profit so probably they have the ability do have they have the willingness that also should be there many cases we have found that while the ability is their willingness is not there and uh, they are called willful defaulters so they are willful willfully defaulting second thing it should be in timely manner and in full so if you have lent someone say 1 lakh rupees you expect the payment of complete 1 lakh rupees if someone is paying you 95000 99000 99999 99, that is not full as per the definition and it should be on the due date if the due date is 31st of december it should be paid then so that's the rate uh, definition now this slide here is about what is the benefit to banks and why they encourage uh, without going too much in detail i'll say that uh, in a business uh, a simple way to uh, explain this is when you start a business you have some of your own money which is called equity some of the borrowed money and in a bank's business the business has to borrow and lend so out of 100 rupees which they have suppose they have their own money of 10 rupees and borrowed deposits from various individuals companies is 90 and they lend it to someone so they will always want to lend to a borrower where the risk of default is low they are sure that the money is going to come back so that they don't lose it as simple as that and therefore for a borrower which is well rated they will have to put less of their own money because they know that the money is going to come back so they can borrow from depositors and lend it ahead and if it is the risk is high which is lower rating then they need to put more of their own money so in case uh, they don't get the advances back from the borrowers uh they don't suffer the depositors don't suffer a very simple illustration of it can be suppose a bank has got you know 10 rupees of its own borrowed 90 rupees from depositors give it on a loan interest rate of 10% so at the end of the year they are supposed to get 110 and uh, they will pay 90 10% of 90 which is 9 rupees to the depositors and be left with 11 rupees so the interest the, the return for the equity is 11% uh what happens if out of the 110 they are supposed to get they get 105 not 110 so in that case they will still pay the 99 rupees and be left with 6 rupees of their own so they suffer a loss so therefore the banks want to give loan to someone who will repay so that they don't suffer a loss uh so far any doubts anyone any questions is it interesting is it boring how do you feel please please you know uh, give your feedback and uh, type your questions fine so i assume that so far no one has any doubts uh, we'll go to the next part now uh, in some ways a rating is similar to an examination 
it's a closest analogy which comes to your mind. And if you take an examination which is, say, not a school examination, but a public examination, a competitive examination, for example, CAT or GMAT or MAT. Now, these are entrance tests which universities in India and the world ask the candidates to take. The model of a GMAT is that there is a body which conducts GMAT, you have to pay the fees. Having paid the fees, you will you know, get a score at the end of, you will perform something in the examination in 3 hours. Based on that performance, they will give you a score. With that scorecard, you can approach various universities of the world to seek admission. That's the model. So that scorecard should be accepted by the universities so that they say that, okay, this is a good score. This is a proper method of evaluation. The people who are taking that test should also be aware of how they are going to be evaluated or judged. And therefore, they can prepare. Similarly, credit rating, uh, if you have a certain knowledge that how you are going to be evaluated and judged, it will help you, uh, you know, run your business in that manner. The timeline will not be three hours, it will be much more than that. It is normally you look at past performance of three to five years, where it comes for rating of bank loans, and then we look at the possible future performance. The objective is that if you are running a good business, then you will get loan at a low interest rate. That's the objective. So the people who are going to evaluate, what will they look at? That's the question. So there's a framework for evaluation of business. It has four components, business risk, management risk, financial risk, and project risk. So we'll discuss each one of it one by one. So I will go ahead. So in order to take the decision of evaluating a company, we will break that down, that exercise, into smaller parts. Again, I'll give the analogy of similar examination. So, if you have to you know, evaluate performance of an individual, the test paper consists of sections. So, you have a section on maths, English, reasoning, general awareness, etc. Within those sections, you have questions. Some of them are say subjective, some are objective, etc. So the objective is that there is a holistic evaluation of the individual. Similarly, credit rating is also a holistic evaluation and assessment of the business, not being restricted to one particular parameter, not being constrained by only one aspect of the business. The evaluation and assessment with, them, with a view that the company should be no, running profitably or making enough profit to repay the debt. Ultimately, the objective of a, uh, a credit analyst is to find out whether the borrower will be able to repay the debt. And therefore, we divide it into subsections. Now, when we divide, we say, okay, what is the risk of the business? Uh, uh, Pradeep, I, uh, thanks to you. I came to know that you have appreciated this presentation. So, we will look at what is the impact of economic conditions. So, if you look in the recent economic history of India, you will find that certain sectors were not doing very well until two years ago and then they are doing well now. Uh, one example is automobiles, car, bike, etc. They were all making losses, now they are in profit. Certain segment of economy which were doing well earlier traditionally, like information technology, have not been doing so well now due to certain conditions. So what happens, there is an old saying that a rising tide lifts all the boats. So if the economy is generally doing good for a country, uh, then the companies in that economy will do good. Then you look at the industry. What is the industry size? What are the growth prospects and growth drivers? If there is an industry which is growing very fast, uh, one exists, few industries which are growing very fast nowadays, uh, one example comes to mind is e-commerce. It is growing very fast, though not very profitable growth, but growing. 
What are the growth drivers? Mobile phones, another industry, smartphones, it is going very fast because uh, phones are available for uh, cheap, the technology has uh, improved, the data services are available, a lot of players who have entered and promised free data. So that is one industry which has grown very fast and there are a lot of companies uh, which were not in the landscape of uh, the business landscape of India until five years ago. No one would have even heard their name like Micromax. Right. Now it's a very popular brand. So you look at the industry growth, what are the growth prospects, drivers. We will look at the impact of cyclicality in certain industries which are cyclical in nature. Sometimes they grow good, sometimes they do bad. Sugar industry is an example, real estate is an example. Uh, the reason is that, you know, there are so many factors which affect an industry that it is not always easy or possible to have similar kind of growth. We look at the nature and intensity of competition. If there is intense competition, price cutting, then it is difficult to make profit. So right now we have seen that you know, Reliance Geo has entered and they have offered services for free. So it will impact the profit of other players. So if you are operating in such an industry, at this point in time, what is the competition that will matter in the past three years, in the next three years, if we look at expected profitability, which is derived from all these and impact of regulations. Now, this is very important. We have one very recent example that uh, the government announced demonetization. So it's a regulation. So businesses which are driven by cash had to suffer. So could anyone predict this? The answer is no. It was very difficult to predict. But now can we predict? So yes, yes we can that the government is taking some steps uh, to curb the use of unaccounted money or cash. So given all this, you, know, you can form an opinion about the future prospects of a company. Beyond industry, you look at fine, this industry is doing good or bad. What is this particular company doing? So there are examples where there is not a positive correlation. Sometimes the industry might not be doing good. Companies are doing good. Um, very popular example is the real estate sector. In the year 2009 to 2012, most of the companies in real estate were not doing good. But Dodha builders of Mumbai were doing good because of their own plans and strategies. Do you have a good brand? Do you have a pricing flexibility? Do you have a geographical diversity? Do you have end user diversity? Do you have customer concentration? So in our business of rating of SME, we have observed that many such SMEs are there who have one, two or three customers. They are highly dependent on these customers. If one of the customers goes, then there is a risk. So if you have more customers, it means that uh, your business is, is hedged. It's, uh, diversified. That's a good thing uh, from perspective of risk. We look at the operating efficiency. We look at what is the capacity. What is the utilization of that capacity? Is the capacity being utilized completely or is it like underutilized, overutilized? Having a capacity which is not being utilized is normally not a good sign. Uh, companies in India are having lower capacity utilization for the past um, one or two years. So what does it mean? It means that you invested money, you bought machinery, you set up machinery, but you're not getting orders. So that investment is not being put to good use. We will look at access to factors of production. Uh, recently, we had a company which uh, we graded, we rated them for uh, in the industry of paints. Now, there is certain raw material which is nearby located in Karnataka and they started a factory near to the raw material. So, that is something which is favorable. We will look at usage of suitable technology. A technology is a very important thing. Um, in, the, in the recent past, we have observed that how you are using it will affect your businesses. So this list is very exhaustive. There will be examples of each one of this. The idea is that 
we do an exhaustive analysis and research and not restrict to one parameter alone after the industry risk then we look at the financial statements the balance sheet the profit and loss account of the company we look at the quality of accounts is the accounting policy aggressive or is it conservative are there frequent changes in the accounting policy what is the level of disclosure so suppose there is one company which maintains inventory but they maintain inventory in the basis of you no know, uh, say last in first out so what happens that if the price of raw material is rising so in that case the inventory which you bought later will have high cost and it will therefore show that your cost of goods sold is lower and you will have a higher profit whereas another company which has you know, first in first out so therefore if the price is rising their profit will be shown as lower whereas in actual the profit might be same so we look at those things okay so we will look at uh, the uh, you know profit and the quality of earning now there are business and uh, they started business of solar panels they were integrating solar panels so of the total revenue 30% used to come from fixing solar panels on rooftop and 70% in the it year came from selling of land so the question is that that is not the regular business so what will you do next year if you are selling land and then showing profit probably very soon you will run out of it then it will not be helpful so that is something which you know it it will matter uh, we will look at the liquidity position a company which has more assets than liabilities if required can sell those assets and assets i mean like if you look at current assets that is very liquid uh, within current asset we look at investments cash etc now if you have some inventory and you are facing some pressure to repay the debt you can sell that inventory maybe at a discount 5% and since the assets were more so we look at the current ratio uh, so for say one lakh rupees of liability you have two lakh rupees of assets and then someone is pressing you to repay so you can sell that two lakh rupees worth thing even if you give a 5% discount uh, you know it is one lakh 90 thousand so you are still making profit and you are able to repay so that is something which is important which you looked at we will look at the financial flexibility the cash the liquidity relationship with lenders the track record etc and last but not least will be the management ultimately any business is as good as the people who are running that business we have seen many cases where businesses could have done well but could not do so because of the people who are running a very famous or infamous example is king fisher airlines that has gone from a star airline at having of the customers and the markets to being a failure so we will look at what is the history of people in debt servicing are they serious about repaying their debt are there any legal cases or disputes are there related party transactions transparency and disclosures related party transaction means you know you are borrowing money from your own friends or selling it to them then uh, that will cause some doubts on the ability to sell competency risk appetite risk of growth aspirations qualification what is the professional experience what is the qualification what is professional experience which is related uh, my experience i have seen a lot of people who have started businesses uh, at a very young age and while the qualification on paper might not be good but by the time the age the, they have completed you know uh, only maybe they are in mid 30s or 40s but even then they have huge experience they have like 15 20 years of experience so they have learned with the experience and they have been able to perform while there are also people who have a mix of those and we have people who were 
having 30 35 years of experience in corporate and then they started and they joined so so the point i'm trying to make is that it will not be restricted just to education or experience it will be both uh project risk is specific if someone is starting a new project and we will look at what is the implementation risk ability of management in implementing projects where is it located will there be time and cost over and so on so that completes the part of bank loan rating uh, so i will just summarize bank loan rating is rating of a particular bank borrowing banks want the borrowers to get rated because it helps them avoid loss of credit so if they give loan doesn't come back it's a loss and we just discuss what is the way in which this analysis is done the good thing is that the banks also follow this process and the rating agency also follow the same process the difference comes that one banks uh, seek our opinion that you know if you want to invest something you will seek opinion of those who think you think are capable so that is one so it is very similar but we will seek our experience second we have specialized analyst for industry so their exposure of that industry is generally more than the exposure of the bank's credit officers and therefore the opinion is valuable so we can take a, a one minute pause if anyone has any questions uh, please write it in the comment then we'll go to the next part which is even more interesting than the past last one fine so i have a question by mr pradeep agarwal so why there is different level of rating for big and small units when the financials are the same so i'll go back to the previous slide so in this financial risk analysis one factor is if you look at step 5 the uh, size of net worth generally it has been observed that companies which have a larger net worth are able to manage their debt because they have access to more resources which is one reason but it is not always so some companies which are small in size have better management can also get good rating and uh, the future the subsequent slides which i will show uh, will show that so we have a different scale for smaller companies a large company can have a bad rating also we have seen many infrastructure companies which are very large in size but their rating has been of default category because they are not able to service that debt. so generally one it is uh, in certain cases that if it is net worth there is a possibility that other things remaining same now it is very important if other things are same all other things the profit the profitability the the business size etc then it is possible that a company which is large in size has more net worth might get higher rating but that is not a rule observed it's an observation it has been the experience that they are more resourceful so they are able to weather the storm better if there is a large company they have more professionals working for them if they have to you know execute a project they are able to execute it better a smaller company they are fewer people so it can be possible they are not able to execute but the other is also the otherwise is also true that you know it's difficult to manage a large company so as i said there is no such rule there can be instances where because of higher net worth and more resources they have got a better rating so the another question is that the rating agency says that as a ssi you cannot get the top 5 to 7 ratings so our interest rates have been reduced as the outside agency has rated us lower due to the above rule as compared to rating by 
bank fine so i think uh, this question will be answered when we go to the other section of this slide which is uh, performance and credit rating fine so i will then proceed to the uh, next section which will be relevant here now so far we talked about rating of bank loan now if reliance industries goes to a bank to borrow and then sme goes to bank to borrow the bank will put them on the same scale so they will say an sme as compared to another company no mind my words the bank will not say an sme as compared to other sme or ssi has this credit worthiness they will say a company which is an sme with another company which is a large corporation and the rating of large corporation is you know uh, uh, say double a but your rating is b because you are very small they are large that's a scale there are limitations of those scale so to address this challenge the government of india came up with a new scale in the year 2005 that is called performance and credit rating of micro and small enterprises which is also emerging corporate because the definition is investment in plant and machinery so it is likely that your investment plant or machinery is low but your revenues are high uh, if the investment in plant and machinery is up to 2 crores then it is a micro enterprise if it is 5 crore then it's a medium enterprise it's a, a small enterprise 5 to 10 crore is called a medium enterprise so that's a definition and therefore you will be compared with other smes uh, before we go to the scheme we will discuss what are the challenges faced by msc and how does this scheme address these challenges and uh, i will request people to share their experiences if they think this is true or if we can improve our own knowledge so one challenge is lack of funding avenues so as uh, is the question uh, there are not many banks or nbfcs who are willing to lend their smes and the risk identification is also not proper the product and the market of smes is limited they will have to sell to a limited geography uh, because the reach is not that wide you do not have sales offices across the globe so while there might be a demand for example for your product in say singapore you don't have an office in singapore and the product is very good but there is no one advocating your product lack of product diversification you specialize in one line you cannot no uh, you cannot diversify into another product line because it requires technology it requires skill people resource planning high dependency on promoters to manage business lack of professionals with domain knowledge so that is another risk which uh, or another challenge with the smes and emerging corporate have to face that one person is managing a lot of most of the business in financial discipline we have found that the balance sheet is weak uh, because there is withdrawal of capital or non retention of profit many times capital is brought in as debt which is quasi equity working capital management practices are not very good there is not follow up with debtors so the uh, the time it takes to get your own money is very high and there is no bargaining power suppliers because they are dependent on suppliers especially for the if the suppliers are large in size the access to finance professionals are low so therefore the financial planning itself suffers at times and there is frequent intergroup transactions uh, there are sometimes delays in statutory pays there are improper bookkeeping at times because lack of resources and banking conduct is not you know very good at times because of lack of awareness again 
technology many uh, many emerging corporates still use uh, manual processes management information systems are not used as exhaustively as they can be marketing methods are old data is stored in physical format electronic data is not stored innovation in product or the process is generally lacking with large number of smes so if we have to summarize the challenges it is i'll say lack of funding lack of buyers lack of skilled employees or skilling of the promoter themselves and technology four areas funding buyers technology skill how can these challenges be addressed and how you now you uh, look at the credit worthiness so there is a scheme of the government of india which is called performance and credit rating scheme it was started in the year 2005 smera was also established in the same year it was started in april 2005 when we were established in the year 2000 uh, in the month of september 2005 specifically to cater to the medium and small enterprises and emerging corporate we do this rating and other rating agencies like excel lecra etc also do this now this is a third party opinion on the capabilities and credit worthiness of micro and small enterprises and it is done by people who specialize in this so a large number of smes more than 1 lakh have been rated under this scheme so what are the benefits and how does it address those challenges it is an independent opinion on capabilities and credit worthiness of msc in this rating an msc is compared to other msc this is a 8 point scale where one so we use the nomenclature smera one uh, smera msc one so msc one means you are having highest credit worthiness compared to other small and medium enterprises you are not being compared to large corporate you are not being compared to tata group birla group reliance group airtel airtel which are the large corporate or godrej an msc is being compared to an msc if an msc gets a good rating in the top 3 then you get a interest rate benefit from the bank which can be 0.25 to 0.5% interest rate second thing is it's a very detailed report as part of this scheme the rating agencies have to give a detailed report in the bank loan rating you don't get a detailed report you get just a rating that okay your company's rating is triple b minus double b plus double a and you get to know only one page if you want to find out that where is the business lacking what is that we are doing good that is not readily available it is not shared so as i said you get because of this report credit at interest rate which is good and there is a tie up between nsic national small industries corporation and indian banks association which will give an interest rate benefit and the banks will recognize so if you have this rating which is an sme compared to other smes then you can get an interest rate benefit now it's also dependent on the rating outcome i'm not saying that in every case you will get a good rating but you have an advantage that you are not being compared to the large corporate you are being compared to smes so that the competition itself is reduced uh it enhances the acceptability of msc because there is a third party which is you know verifying and which is uh, uh which is giving their certificate to your performance in fact we give a certificate which people display businesses can display in their office and their premises and we also share that under the scheme with the government of india and they have come up with a very good initiative about which i will talk later so the misconception about msme is that msme tend to get lower rating concept of msme rating is unique to india smme rating is expensive 
rating outcome is rising from the strength of the financial statements this is not entirely true smes as i said will get a rating compared to other smes which can be 1 2 or 3 or 8 points scale msmes are rated in many countries of the world because smes are very important component of all the economies in this world the smes which are there will you know contribute to employment they create employment it's easier to start up and manage a smaller company so there are many of them they give employment to others they contribute to exports there are certain art and craft which are very unique in nature so that is being promoted so overall many countries of the world will promote smes australia us canada turkey africa they promote smes recently we had done a session for the smes in africa in nigeria uh, where the government is promoting smes misconception is that it is an expensive affair for msmes uh, which is not true because lot of the fees is subsidized by government of india so before we go on to how we dealt the credit rating so smeras response to this misconception is that we have a comprehensive credit assessment methodology we have developed we have spent years in finalizing it and uh, we understand the dynamics of small and medium enterprises we have found that if companies come for rating consistently then it improves their performance outcomes are not just in terms of getting loan but also being aware of your own performance and being able to improve and it helps the banks also so i tell you about this scheme the performance and credit rating scheme and then uh, i talk of a recent development which is started in may 2016 that was going to help address those four challenges which we had mentioned so the scheme works like this there are mscs there is a rating agency there is nsic and there are banks so mscs approach rating agencies and they pay a part of the rating fee they share the information and document rating agency assigns a rating to the enterprise after the analysis using the parameters which we had discussed in past some time ago then we submit this rating to nsic national small industries corporation and it also goes through something called msme data bank and then they get a rating fee subsidy so whatever is the cost so this is misconception being addressed that's a cost to appear so whatever is the cost of this rating will be uh, 75% will be borne by national small industries corporation how do you rate new enterprises okay fine so i will answer this question how to rate new enterprises uh, once i talk about the pcr scheme so uh, msc's will get rating fees and under the public procurement policy the public sector undertakings like ntpc iocl bpcl etc will buy 20% of the goods from msc so that the scheme now what are the components of rating report we give a report which is 30 to 40 pages depending on the size of the unit which will have a rating which will identify the strength weakness opportunities and threats being faced by the enterprise details of the company analysis of business ownership management financial profile graphs details of the banks their facilities site visit report photographs and benefits so it's a very comprehensive report which can be shared with prospective suppliers and customers and this is about the rating fees under this scheme so when msc's get rated they are beneficiary of the scheme of government of india and the government of india is paying a subsidy if the turnover is up to rupees 50 lakhs the total fees is 25300 10300 is paid by the sme and 15000 is paid by nsic to the rating agency above 50 lakhs and 2 crores 43700 fees 30000 paid by the government 
paid by the SME. Above 2 crore rupees, 57,000 is the fee. So the government pays this. So we address one misconception that the cost will fail. How does it work? Generally, we get a request. We ask for documents. We do a visit of the place. Then we discuss with the management about what is the business, what are the prospects, competition, etc. And then we give a rating report. If the client accepts, we publish on the website. If they don't accept, we don't publish on the website. So there are some examples where uh, I will show that how the company is benefited. So there's one question that how do you rate companies which are established seven or 10 months. So if I go back to the, uh, the methodology, we will, no, we, we look at the promoters. We look at the industry. A seven, eight, nine months old company will not have large number of financial performance or history of performance of the company but at the same time, there will be a history of performance of the individual who is running their business. So what is their experience? What is their qualification? That will play a role. Second thing is we will look at the business contracts they have got. Do they have orders in hand? Orders in hand is an assessment of confidence of the buyers. Third thing we will look at is the systems and processes in place and the investment which has been made. Any businessman who is serious will invest their some money in the business. So it shows a commitment towards the business. We give weightage to that. Diversity of customers and suppliers is important. So we rated one company in Gujarat where the company is new but the promoters are very seasoned and experienced. And the technology which they are using is very advanced technology. So the gentleman who runs, he's a PhD, one Dr. Patel, and he has uh, worked in industry for some years. So then he quit that job and came here. So that experience is value. So we will look not just as the financial, but also the other things, performance, etc., of the, the unit, uh, the people who are running that unit. And we will look at the other factors which contribute to success of an SME. Uh, so I guess I have answered the question. Fine. So we will revisit those challenges which we had identified. So one challenge was lack or lack of access to finance. Other challenge was lack of access to technology. Third one was skill of people. Fourth one was limited reach to customers and how is this addressed? So I'm retreating the challenges because uh, you know, it is important to understand and relate it to how the schemes of the government and rating agencies work. Now this is a example of a company which we had and this graph shows the change in their profitability over years. Now, uh, their line of business is extra high, low voltage electro porcelain insulators. Incidentally, it's located in Kolkata. If you look at this graph, you realize that the profit margin and the return on capital had dipped in their 2013 and then they rose from as uh, 2013 the, the return on capital was low, it was 9% and then became more than 14% in the year 2015. So this is something which was helpful. Uh, the interest coverage ratio improved. Bankers were happy to lend to them. Income and profit increased. So what was the company doing in 2011, 14 and 15? They came to us many times. Company had an experienced management run by family members. But they lack qualified and experienced professionals who could highlight areas of concern. Once we created a report, then they were able to recognize this. And they expanded their base in domestic as well as international market. They uh, looked, they went for some training development of the management of people. The company's collection days 
were high. They were 137 days. They did not know what is the industry average or not. Once it was shared with them, we then they took a note of it. They devised better plan. They brought down the collection days to 46 days in the year 2015. In a matter of four years, it was reduced. Their customer base was very concentrated. So Smera's ratings highlighted this fact and it was brought to their knowledge. So then they acquired more customers. Capital structure was good, but there was uh, no long term borrowing. So it was a good thing about the company, which was highlighted and they continued the good practice. So the point is that not everything is a weakness. There are some strengths. And when you come to know that it's a strength and you have been uh, doing it well, it makes sense to continue doing it that way. There's another example of a stated construction where uh, an old company and the operating profit and net profit had declined slightly and then they increased income and profit of the company has also um, fluctuated. Now in this company not much change MSME 3 to MSME 3 2 uh, but it's also not a duration. So they have observed that profit margins are healthy. So it's a, it's a testam, uh, testimony to this fact by a third independent agency. So they continued the good practices. They improved the operating profit margin further and uh, they improved the rating. So if the rating improves, you get a benefit in terms of interest rate reduction. There's a third company which we'll see that return on capital went down, then again improved profit, profit, uh, net profit, operating profit consistently in certain range. Uh, debt is going down in this case. The debt equity ratio has improved. So they have reduced their debt. The income and the profit generally on an increasing trend. So the SMEs have benefited. These are some examples of individual units which have benefited. Overall, if you look at the entire space and the universe of SMEs, there are some 15% who have got interest rate benefit uh, in terms of reduction of borrowing cost. Now, the point is that out of the entire universe of 1 lakh which have been rated some 15-20% have got an interest rate benefit because this benefit is dependent on the regulation of government which says that if you have got the highest rating you get 25-50% to 50 interest rate reduction. Others get loan sanctioned from bank which is also a benefit. Profit growth is higher compared to unrated companies because you come to know the strength and the weaknesses. More than 30% growth in bank credit. So as I said, while you might not get uh, loan at a lower interest, you are still getting loan and more loan. So more loan is being financed so it fuels growth. And the sales as a consequence increases. Uh, so I've been talking about the government initiative and the new initiative. I repeated that three, four times. This is an initiative of this government. It is called MSME Data Bank. There's a video which I will show. Once the video has been played, it will answer those three or four critical questions which we saw in the beginning are the challenges faced by SMEs. So just a brief about this. MSME Data Bank is an online database. So it's a web portal. People can go and register. PSUs have to procure 20% of goods from MSMEs as per the policy of Government of India, public procurement policy. It has been created so uh, individual units can register on that MSME portal. Associations of SMEs, credit rating agencies, etc. can also uh, help you register there. And it contains certain details of MSME, business details, credit rating, etc. The government of India is going to root a lot of schemes of theirs through this portal. So once we have watched the video, 
then I will share in more detail about what are the benefits. Hello and welcome to How to Be on MSME Data Bank Online. I want to say to the people of the world, I want to say to the people of the world, come, make in India. Dear friends, our Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi is the driving force behind Make in India, Skill India and Digital India through which micro, small and medium entrepreneurs are also being immensely benefited. Further taking PM's vision to a step ahead, Union Minister of MSME Shri Kalraj Mishra is continuously encouraging and facilitating MSMEs by transforming them into digitally empowered fraternity. Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises is building a comprehensive live digital data bank of MSMEs online. The data bank is being established with the purpose to help MSMEs to participate in the procurement process under public procurement policy of Government of India. The MSME data bank allows Ministry of MSME to capture the census data online along with the information and requirements related to joint venture, technology transfer, import-export of machinery and also enables to streamline and monitor various schemes and policies so that Ministry can pass on the benefits directly to the MSMEs. I'm sure you all are aware that 20% of all the government procurements have to be mandatorily from MSME sector and to be sourced from the MSME data bank. In order to avail this facility, MSMEs can enroll themselves in the web portal www.msmedatabank.in and be part of the next level business opportunities. If you are a member of any industries association like CII, FICI or associated with any MSME development organization like DCMSME, NSIC, KVIC, COIR board and others, then they can also enroll your organization in MSME Data Bank on your behalf. Now let us see how to enroll in MSME Data Bank. In. First, open a web browser like Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Mozilla in your computer and then type www.msmedatabank.in To enroll, click on Register icon. Now you will see three options. 1. MSME 2. Association and 3. MSME Development Organization If you want to register yourself on your own, then click on MSME. Most important, you need to have your Aadhaar and Udyog Aadhaar number to enroll into MSME Data Bank. If you don't have Udyog Aadhaar number, then click here on the link provided to get Udyog Aadhaar. You will be redirected to the Udyog Aadhaar number registration page where you have to fill all the details in this form and then submit. You will immediately get your Udyog Aadhaar number on the screen. Now it's time to enroll in MSME Data Bank. Fill your Aadhaar number, Udyog Aadhaar number and PAN number here. Then click on Validate. Your details will be validated. After validation, some of the fields like enterprise name, category unit size, organization type, major activity, state, district, PIN code, commencement date which are already filled with the information provided at the time of Dyog Aadhaar number registration. So you need not to fill them again. Now select nature of operation of your unit. Fill authorized person's name here. This person will receive all the information about all other future correspondents. You just need to hover your mouse here if you need any help about that field. You may choose your appropriate category here. You can choose multiple options. Answer these simple questions about your enterprise. Now it's time to fill details about your company like enterprise address,
number of employees, per annum production capacity, investment on machinery, power load, major raw material used, major buyers, and annual turnover. Here, add your product details, one product at a time, like product name. Select your product's HS or NPC code from this drop-down list. Fill your production capacity and measurement of individual product. You can add as many products you wish to. Here, just fill your bank name, account number, IFSC code. You might have taken any assistance from development organizations like DC MSME, NSIC, KVIC. Now about the industry associations you are registered with. You can add multiple associations here. We would also like to capture the information about the awards and appreciations you received. Now MSME Data Bank requires some additional information about your enterprise for your future projections and planning like whether you are planning for exports, looking for upgrade or import of technology, ISO certification and other quality certifications or even if you will be interested in credit facilitation. All this information is on self-declaration basis. Please check the declaration and click on submit. You will see a confirmation message on your screen and you will receive your credentials email with the user ID and password which enables you to edit and update your information as and when you require. Now you are enrolled with MSME Data Bank and very soon your information will be available to all the government procurement departments so that they can procure products manufactured by MSMEs. All this information will be helpful in streamlining schemes and policy making for MSMEs. Get ready to expand your business. PM Modi's vision, our economy's growth with MSME's expansion. So I hope that video was useful. Now, if we revisit, what does the data bank do? And we have created records of some thousand SMEs in the past four to five months. You have to enter the product code of production manufacturing. Now that is an online directory. The PSUs of Government of India, if they want to buy, they will be directed. They can log into that ID and they can then place an order so that helps the solve the problem of access to markets it is not just restricted to india if you are an exporter you want to export the product code which is being written there is a us customs product code which means that all the countries of the world will identify that product with that code and can place an order with the sm Second challenge was that uh, lack of access to credit. So one way is that the report which is created, you can share with the banks. At the same time, when a credit rating is done, those details are also entered in the MSME data bank. So the banks then will identify good SMEs which have a good rating and approach the SMEs and the emerging corporate to give loan. So that solves the problem of access to credit third thing is that lack of technology now there is a column in the data bank which is about technology are you using current technology do you want to use some other technology if you have some technology do you want to share with others so therefore the government and the companies which promote technology 
can help the MSEs, the emerging corporate, to get access to technology. The fourth thing is skilled manpower. So the uh, the people who work there, what is the level of skill? Are they skilled or unskilled? That information is also shared by the the MSME, and therefore the government can run its scheme of helping them. So these are uh, uh, these are the some uh, some advantages uh, than the benefits of the rating and the data bank. Now uh, I have one more question that if one has not registered his unit as an MSME unit, can he register himself on MSME data bank? Uh, so no sir, it is not possible. You have to first register a unit which is also very easy. You can create an Udyog Aadhaar. If you have got a PAN card, if you have an Aadhaar card, these two basic details are required to create an Udyog Aadhaar which is similar to an Aadhaar card for individuals. Then that Aadhaar card, uh, that Udyog Aadhaar can be used to register on the MSME data bank. The Aadhaar card and data bank are based on self-declaration. You don't have to submit a proof at the time of creating of Aadhaar card. If you are declaring that this is or for the data bank, if you are declaring that you know, the installed capacity is such and such, then uh, you, know, you are making a statement which can be verified. So you don't have to submit a proof. If they want to verify, they will verify. And it's a good thing about it. Uh, the entry is easy. So when we began the discussion, we discussed the idea of credit rating. We discussed that what is the need of a third party opinion and when did it start and we then came to know that it was started almost 100 years ago because a third party opinion is very very valuable for its independence and unbiasedness. There is one interesting story related to this. For the first 50 years, from 1910 to 1960, 65, it was the investor who used to pay for rating. And then it was like a newspaper, you go and you buy it. In the 60s and 70s, one technological advancement, one invention happened, due to which the investors stopped paying for rating reports or rating. That invention was the invention of photocopy machine and fax machine. So now it was possible to photocopy the ratings and share with your friends or fax it to them. So in the absence of uh, uh, anyone who would pay and buy a rating, the credit rating industry was facing a threat. Why should anyone, how will they make their money? Then the issuers, the people who issue bond and borrow money, said that we will pay and you come and rate us because we think that we are better than others and therefore it will be proved in your report and we will get loan at a lower interest rate. So this fundamental change has happened 50 years ago and it has still survived. It means that people see value and independent opinion. So that was the history of credit rating we detailed, we discussed. Then uh, we talked about what is the various products which are rated. So a bank loan is rating of a bank facility that is specific to a bank. On that scale an SME emerging corporate is compared to a large corporate and therefore the chances that you get a favorable rating are lower. The process which is which is followed is the same for the large company as well as the SME. And we discuss about the details of how it is arrived. We look at business, management, financial analysis, etc. Then we talked about rating of SMEs and emerging companies. 
we realize that there are certain misconceptions that they will always get lower ratings, which is not true. The fees, which is being financed partially by the government of India, the misconception about uh, you know, that it's based only on financials, which is also not true. We came to know of the challenges which are faced by MSCs and what is a possible solution. And we now know that these challenges are being tried to address by the national small industries corporation, wherein they are providing assistance of various kind, which is the data kind. Now NSIC runs various schemes for SMEs. So they get uh, you get a subsidy if you want to have an exhibition uh, in a foreign place. There's a subsidy for marketing assistance, etc. So there are a lot of schemes which are being given. These schemes can be better targeted if the unit is part of the database of government, which is a free service by the rating agencies. So rating agencies can update your details on the data bank on the on your behalf without charging any additional fees. They will do it as a part of the rating. And uh, the rating agencies also write about the credit rating on the data bank and that will be helpful for banks and uh, foreign buyers and Indian buyers. So I will take another 5 minutes to talk about Smera and what is Smera and who is Smera. Uh, before that we can have a pause of 1 minute and give a chance to people to ask questions if there are any doubts, any questions. And so I think that uh, we can go ahead. In case anyone has a question, we can address that later. Uh, so Smera Ratings is a credit rating agency which was established in the year 2005 as a joint venture between Small Industries Development Bank of India and Dun and Bradstreet Information Services India Private Limited. SIDBI, Small Industries Development Bank, is a Quasi financial regulator, which is interested in the job of financing of MSME sector for the past more than 25 years, a leading institution to promote SMEs. Dun and Bradstreet is an international organization headquartered in the US. Headquartered in the US, they have been in the business of rating and reports for more than 150 years. They came up with the idea that there should be a dedicated rating agency for SMEs and hence Smera was established. The other key shareholders are the leading banks, Union Bank of India, Bank of Baroda, ICIC Bank, Indian Bank, State Bank of India, Oriental Bank of Commerce, etc. And it is because of this that the ratings done by Smera have got wide acceptance by the banking community. In order to do the business of rating, one needs to have the regulatory approvals. Uh, the approvals have uh, uh, to be taken by the SEBI, Security and Exchange Board of India, Reserve Bank of India, NSIC, National Small Industries Corporation, Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, and Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. We have all these approvals in place which is a testimony of our ability. Fine. So, thanks a lot to the participants for being a patient audience. I hope I have been able to solve the queries and if you have any further queries, you can note down the numbers for WhatsApp and email. Thank you.